In this video, I'll show some things I do to model architecture quickly. That way, as you're modeling a building, things will look right and light correctly. To start with, sometimes I need exposed columns. Rather than just have a simple cylinder, I like to add a little extra detail. What I'll do is more of a modernist bent on it. I'll take this cylinder and put a radius in of 11 and a height of 6. Remember that default max units are in inches. I'll give it one height segment and 24 sides. Then I'll take this cylinder and convert it to an editable poly. I'll press 4 for polygon and pick the top and bottom polygons and delete them. Now I've got a ring of faces. This will be the base for my column. I'll press F12 for the transform type in and W for move if I haven't already. I'm going to put this to start at 0, 0 with the Z of 0 as well, so it sits on the ground. Now for the rest of the column. I'll make a new cylinder that's one inch bigger. I'll give the cylinder a radius of 12 and a height of 137. Here's where that math comes in. I'm figuring I want a 12 foot ceiling in this particular room. 6 inches for the base, 137 on the shaft gives me 143. I'm going to put one extra inch up at the top for an extra reveal to make the lighting look nice. Again, I'll give this one height segment and 24 sides. I want it to look round, but I don't need extra divisions along the length. I'll press F12 for the transform type in, and in the absolute world, zero out the X and Y and put the Z at 6. Now they're perfectly on top of each other. Finally, I'll take the bottom cylinder and clone it, pressing Control v for duplicate or clone options, and clone as a copy. I'll put this object up at a z of 143. Notice there's a lot of ways to get stuff done. I'm using the absolute world transform type in here to get this where I want. I could just as easily use the align tool. I'll press 3 for border, pick the top border, and move it down by 5 inches. On the offset world, I'll put in negative 5. As we can see in the absolute world, my Z is now 144 and my column is ready. Now I'm ready for naming and materials. The big deal is when this column lights, I'll get an extra shadow line down at the base and a reveal where the column meets the ceiling at the top. I'll use this a lot when I have exposed columns in a room. For the next example, I'll make some windows. I'll take this column and clone it, pressing Control v to clone and cloning as an instance. I just need one for now. Once I've got the windows, I'll clone the rest out. I'll press F12 for the transform type in and move this off on the X by 20 feet, 240 inches. For my windows, I'll press F for front to go into a front view and G for grid so I can see a little clearer. What I'm going to do is land some windows with major frames aligned with the columns and minor pieces in the middle. I'll start out with the box, pressing Control and right click to choose box on the creation menu. I'll begin my first box pressing S for snap and using the 2.5D snap. As a side note, I like my snaps on vertices. I'll press Shift and right click to access the quad menu for snap options and make sure that grid points are not checked but vertices are. Now I'll snap this in from, well, one column to the other. That's just fine, with any old height. The piece I care about initially is that this is snapped from top to bottom. The length is 144. Now I'll put in a width of 6 and a height of 10. I'll take this column and align it on the absolute transform down at the bottom. I'll put in an X of 0 and the Y I'll leave alone with a Z at 72. That should be fine. Right now it's on my column, actually starting at the center. So I'm going to move it off by a couple of feet so I can see clearer. What I like to do a lot of times is put up a window grid in front of a column and let the sunlight spill around the column. I'll go in a front view, pick that box, press Control-V for cloning, and clone as an instance. Then move it over 240. Now I'm going to hide the column to make things easier to see. I'll select the columns, 
selecting one, holding control and picking the other, and right clicking and choosing hide selection. What I'll do then is hold control and right click and make more boxes. The first will be the top and bottom frames in the windows. I'll snap this in, jump to the modifier panel. I'll leave the width alone, but make the length 4, so it slims down. I'll let the height be a little bit less, maybe 8. That way I get a hierarchy of pieces in here. I'll take this and snap it on the y-axis up to the top of the columns, pressing spacebar for selection lock and pulling it up. I'll hold shift and duplicate this down for a bottom frame. I know they're not aligned with the columns yet, I can deal with that shortly. Really what I care about is now the spacing of the pieces in here. What I like to do, rather than just put a grid in, is to have a little fun with the design. I'll use another box, snapped in, and then space them out nearly randomly. Here's my box snapped into place. I'll leave the length at 136, but I'll put the width at 4. Then I'll put the height at 6. I'll take this and I'll slide it over, hold shift, and clone again, and let it get maybe two copies, but rather than an even spacing, I'll move them around a little bit. Now I'm going to fill in some horizontal bars the same way, holding control and right click, choose box, and snap these bars in. For these, I'll make their length 2, so they're the slimmest pieces. I'll move this one up and hold shift and pull it down for a clone. And one more time at a different spacing. I'm shooting for a little bit of a Mondrian effect here as I clone these objects around. I'll fill in the rest of this and show how it looks when I'm done. With the rest of the window frame in place, I'm ready to align them on center. I'll select all of the elements except for the posts and then I'll click on the Align tool up on the top. I'll align onto one of the posts and in this case I only want to align on the Y position from center to center. I'll press OK and all the frames are in place. The last step is to attach this together and clean up the end polys to reduce the rendering load. I'll pick any one of the pieces right click and choose convert to editable poly then I'll right click and pick the dialog next to attach in the attach list I'll pick all of the other boxes now I'm ready for some cleanup I'll make sure I click on the window crossing toggle so that way I have to window around faces completely to select them I'll go into a front view hit Z to zoom extents hit 4 for polygon and start deleting unnecessary pieces. So you can see where the transform is there's an extra face right here next to the post. I'll run through and delete these to clean up this mesh. I've cleaned up the mesh taking off the top and bottom faces on the main frames and all the small faces off the ends of the middle frames. To make this ready to duplicate I actually want to delete one element I accidentally attached, so I only have one post in my design. Now I'm ready to name this object and clone it. I'll go into a front view, press spacebar for selection lock, and snap on the x-axis. Clicking on the left side of the post, holding shift and dragging to the right to snap the window assembly onto itself. I'll instance them and make, let's say, three copies. There's my window frames ready for use. I'll unhide my columns and I can finish out the rest of the building. This is an example of a design I would use in maybe a large multi-purpose space or a lobby or similar large place. What I'm looking for here is that I've got a neat pattern that the sun can filter through when I light with a daylight system or similar lighting. 